I wanted to ask you, why is it important for men to care about their hormones as much as women? So I'm going to say something kind of controversial. Ladies, if your man is not chasing you around 24-7 in your house, he's sick. No joke. Like sick, sick, like low hormones. And the reason you want to, especially as a guy, get tested is because, guys, we're, I always say, we're simple creatures. If we have a little bit of testosterone, we could be missing our left arm and not know. Most things that will kill guys, they won't have any symptoms. Listen to this. There will be no presentation. Like with my mom's labs, she had what we call a silent risk for coronary artery disease. She didn't have symptoms of, of, a, of any kind of heart disease at all. Testing is the only thing that found it for her. And that's where men and women are so different. Men, we don't know we're sick ever. Until we have the flu, then it is called the man flu, and that is a, a scientific term. But ladies, you guys are much more in tuned with your body. You know the second something's wrong. And for men to get tested to me, is, it's, it's extremely important because we'll push our bodies until we die. And that's typically what happens. That's why men typically die younger. It's also why men will have more heart disease. There's a lot of silent risk factors for men that they just don't pick up on. And getting tested can unveil a lot of the hidden triggers, hidden inflammation that can cause a man's body to dysfunction and obviously to fail at the end of the day. And without that testing, it's, it's guessing. That's why we're, the thing we do in our office so heavily is we test, we test, we test. Because at the end of the day, I don't know what's going on with your body until I actually test you. That's one thing that gets me so fired up about a lot of the natural world is because you have this symptom, take this supplement. And that doesn't work for a lot of people. They end up taking a supplement and getting frustrated and saying, oh, the natural approach didn't, doesn't work. And that's the thing that's very frustrating to me, especially with men, is they're dealing with low energy levels. They're dealing with stress. They're dealing with weight gain. And they don't get any testing, but their doctors put them on a bunch of medications. And to me, it, that's backwards. You should be testing them like crazy and understanding what's going on in their body before you ever recommend anything to them. Because... Men just never think anything's wrong. It's true. A lot of guys here are thinking it too. They're like, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. I got to wake up to work in the morning. Right. Well, you know, um, speaking on that, a lot of people, I, I think everybody's of age here, but a lot of men think the only time that their testosterone is low is if their libido is not right. right. But is that true or not true? No, no, nah, that's, again, the symptoms that you feel typically come several months to years after the problem has already started. And that is one of the things that most men associate with. If they have a good libido or they have energy throughout the day, that there's not a problem. And I can say that's not the case. Um, I mean, just off the top of my head, I've had men coming in that they have no sex drive, but their testosterone is at 1,200. I know several people that would kill to have those levels of testosterone. And a lot of times, the testing comes into play. Because with him, if they were to give him testosterone replacement therapy, he'd get cancer in six months. And they would have no idea that they caused him to get that. Because he's, they, if they didn't test him properly, they're going to give him a medication that could actually cause harm to his body. Because he's been recommended it too. And he was like, I don't want to get, I don't want to be put on that medication. But when you start to notice the low libido, the disease process has already started. And again, the one great thing that you can do is you can make the changes necessary to reverse that. You can. The one thing is it takes a lot of discipline, but it also takes time. Like when you do things the natural world, the, that's the, where I know a lot of people get really frustrated is the natural world takes time. It takes consistency. Where the medical world, you take a pill and that's it. Right. But the thing is they don't teach you the habits the band-aid and that's really all they're doing is they're trying to make you feel better right away which I can't disagree with if a medication saves your life I'm gonna thank that medication I'm gonna thank that doctor but at the end of the day is we need to find out why you're sick and with men it, they usually prolong it they wait months years and 
when you wait that long, it's just it's that much more time that your body needs to recover from it. So say, what are the dangers of young females being on birth control or synthetic hormones? Ouch. <laughs> um, it's, it's really untold. And with the birth controls, again, I love, I love being I a guy. I, I love being a guy and having to say this, but <laughs> with, with birth control, it doesn't make your hormone, or it doesn't eat, level out your hormones. It gives you synthetic. I would love to show you guys labs of what birth control actually does to women's bodies. And when you test their hormones, they look, their hormones are lower than menopausal women. And that's scary. And then if you're sick before you go on birth control, the second you come off birth control, you're still sick. Your symptoms will still come right back. They did nothing to change your hormones. They put a Band-Aid on it. And the long-term effects, I can't really say. We're having one of the first generations coming off being put on birth control when they started their cycles. You guys have to realize, too, birth control was used to control birth. Most women are not on it for that reason. Most women are on it because their cycles are so horrible because they were never taught what normal cycles are supposed to be like and how to take care of their hormones. I mean, that's a big thing we do in our office is we do a ton of education so you know what it's supposed to be like, how you're supposed to take care of your body. Because, ladies, did you know you're supposed to be four different women throughout the month? Yeah, talk about that. That was my next question. So when me and my wife got married, when, when the pastor says, Devin, do you take faith to be your lawfully the wedded wife? I said, I do, I do, I do, and I do. Because I knew, marrying a healthy young woman, I was going to be marrying four different healthy young women. Because every month, you have to think, your hormones dictate who you are. They determine your mood, your energy. That's why, ladies, if you don't feel the same week to week, that's fine. It's perfectly fine. This is so good. It stinks that a guy has to sit up here and tell you, especially a 28-year guy that's probably sweating because I have eyes just beating on me right now. <laughs> and people are probably giving me death stares, and that's fine. But it's something where if you are four different women throughout the month, that is perfectly fine. You're not supposed to feel the same every single day. And that's fine. Well, I mean, do we get to be four different men then? I mean, no, you just have to learn how to take care of the four different women. Somebody bring him an offering. <laughs> What's your cash app? <laughs> So we oh, need to respond differently That's right. to those four different women. Oh yeah, Men. same woman. Amen. When we do when we do our when we do trainings because we do a lot of that in our office. When we do it for women, I always tell them if you have a significant other, bring him. He men were easy to understand. You give us food. I can't. Go ahead. You give us food. You give us sex. We're happy. In a relationship, obviously. Right. Married, sorry. <laughs> We're simple. Ladies, you're not, and that's fine. But to, uh, as a man, I will say this to all the guys out there, if you understand your woman, your marriage, your relationship will be so much better. Okay. Understanding that some days she'll come home and she will want to hug you, snuggle you all day. The next day you come home, she may wonder why she married you. <laughs> Guess what? That's totally fine. You have to, <laughs> as he points to his girlfriend, wife. <laughs> but if you understand that, that that is okay to have, that you just have to understand that you have to also protect your wife as well, too. Can you tell him the four, because you know, I know you've told us, the four cycles. Week or is one, it, week two, yeah. week three. Yeah, so week one is menstruation. This is, ladies, this is when you are going to be, I always say, at your lowest of lows. Your body is going through a lot. You are probably stressed out beyond belief. Week two is the fun week for men. We call it the man zone. And yes, we're not trying to be rude or insensitive to women, but this is when a woman, her sex drive starts to go up because her hormones are starting to build up. Um, it's actually one of the best times for women to start working out to actually burn the best, to burn fat. Again, we talk about a lot of exercise with women too because ladies, you can't exercise like I can. With your cycle, it can throw off your cycle. Week three is one of the weeks that you have to feed your woman properly. You do. Again, we, 
I don't want to go too crazy in depth, but if you can understand how to treat your woman every single week, she'll be healthier, happier, and then the man, you'll just be as happy as well too. Because there's one thing is, I always say, is men can get stressed out by their wife being sick because they feel helpless. And a lot of guys feel that out there, where their wife is dealing with some kind of health condition, and he just doesn't know what to do with her. And I, I, I love the men that are reaching out and trying to find answers for their wife so that they can get them healthy. But it also comes with once she's healthy, you have to understand her body so that you can keep her healthy too. Because men, we're supposed to be out there to protect our women. We're out there to take care of our women too. And understanding that they are four different people throughout the month is so important. And it's something that there's probably like 5% of guys that actually know that. And a lot of times the 5% of guys have been forced to learn that because their wives have been sick. And then week four, I always say, is the most unknown. Depends on the first three weeks of how you treat her. <laughs> you could have another, what we call the first week, which is menstruation. You could have another construction zone where she does not want to be around you. But you could, if you treat her right for the first three weeks, have another man zone. Buy her flowers, take her shopping, retail Feed therapy. Feed her chocolate. Yeah, dark chocolate, healthy. Not chocolate. Hershey's chocolate, That's please. Right. Like good, organic, like 70 plus percent cacao. Yes. She's going to love you. Hue chocolate is at Walmart. That's a better yeah. option, yeah. You got one? Lily's chocolate is great, too. I don't own part of that I just keep company. thinking of that. That YouTube where that girl's sitting on the couch with her husband, and she's got that nail in her head. <laughs> Have y'all seen that? And she keeps thinking, it's just aching. It just hurts right here. And the, and the male says, well, you got a nail in your head. It's not about the nail. <laughs> I knew you would say that about the nail. Just listen to me. And so he says, I, it must be really hard. And he goes, yeah, you're understanding. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to ask a very um, off this category. And when I'm going to ask this, I have my personal convictions about it. I'm sure that he does as well. It's not to offend you, okay? Vaccine. What are your thoughts on this COVID mRNA vaccine from a medical stand? What are your thoughts? Because I know a lot of people in here have had them, and I'm not trying to say you shouldn't have, but I'm saying in the future, what should we be guarded against? Because we want to see people healthy and happy live. So my stance with, with vaccines is pretty simple. What does it normalize in your body? Like, does it make your body healthy? And I've run labs on people pre and post COVID vaccine, and the results are never beneficial. It is a toxin in your body. It is meant to stress out your system. That is really what it's there to meant to do. And the thing I, I disliked the most about it was how rushed it was. There have been years of studies before most vaccines are rolled out. This one was done in a few months. And from a personal standpoint, I would much rather see people get their immune systems tested, which is a test. It's called an HIV test. And you guys are probably like, I'm not getting tested for HIV. No, HIV testing is actually an immune system test. It is. And if you get that tested, I could tell you if you need to stay home during COVID or if you'd be fine walking out. Because we've had people come into our office, 20-year-olds, that their immune systems are destroyed because of the lifestyles they've chose. And I tell them, like, hey, you need to stay home. Because if you go out, you could get pretty sick. But I've had 80-year-olds get their immune systems tested, and I'm like, you can go out, and then they get COVID, and they get a sniffle. That's where I'd rather people get tested before making decisions like that. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I always say I'm a, I'm a freedom guy. If you want to go out and get it, great. I'll support you through it. I'm not a person who's going to say, oh, I think you're, you're stupid for doing that, or oh, I think it's going to save the world. I'm not that kind of person. I'm going to give you my opinion on it. At the end of the day, as long as you still are doing the right things, giving your body what it needs food-wise, cutting out the sugars, and doing the most out of it, I'm going to support you through it. Just as long as you don't force me to do it. Because personally, I didn't take it. I'm not someone who's going to shy away from that. 
I almost got kicked out of school for it, too, because I was very vocal about it. Like, actually, like, my mom got stressed out. I was six months away from graduating and almost got kicked out of school. It's something where I, I, I always ask people, like, what does it normalize? Does it normalize your immune system? And with my, with my experience with the tests we've run on people pre and post shot, I, I can't say that it normalizes it. And to me, it's, it's scary what it's doing to people. And we have videos, um, especially my father-in-law, from two years ago, even before the vaccine was developed. And he said that this wasn't something that was going to end with lockdowns. It wasn't going to end with masks. It was going to end with a vaccine, and it was going to end with mandates. And these videos were a year before the vaccine was ever rolled out. And then we also predicted, too, that there would be much more chronic health conditions that would come up. Record highs of autoimmune conditions in the past three years. Record high of cancers. Now, can I 100% say that that is directly related to the vaccine? No. Do I ever think there's going to be a study connecting the two? Never. I'd rather people understand their bodies before they make a big medical decision like that. Oh, good. And if it's something where you, again, I'm not someone who is going to sit here and say, if you get it, you can't come into my office. No. I care about every single person that walks into my office, no matter what their views are, as long as they're trying to stay and be healthy. That's good. We're going to open up, so get your questions ready. But I want to just, you could put these together. Mm -hmm. Bad seed oils that they should not cook with and eating at home versus eating out. So I'm someone who I obviously stay away from seed oils. It's a personal decision. And everyone, every natural, like every dietitian and nutritionist out there says, oh, seed oils are perfectly fine for you. I, I don't like to even, it's, it's to me where there's not enough conclusive evidence for either side right now. I just stay away from it personally. So I, I recommend in my office to stay away from them. I'd rather you cook with avocado oil, ghee, there's some good butters, coconut oil. I love those options more than the seed oils personally. What was the second question? Oh, like canola oil, soybean oil. Um, that's, yeah, basically all vegetable oils. Peanut oil, yeah. See, it's, I can't remember what they all are because I don't, I don't even have them in my house. Like we cook 90% of our food with ghee. Um, avocado oil is used for other things. And then I always say coconut oil is great to cook if you're doing like baked goods or sweets because it does have a little sweetness to it. And then the benefits of eating at home versus eating at Controlling the things that are in your food. And I always say, too, when you eat out in this economy, f food prices are going up. They really are. And the one thing, too, that's, this is where I always say, use YouTube as a good resource because there are people that are, they, they try to make food and make food for several people on budgets. And they'll show you exactly the different types of things that you need to buy. Because if it is something, too, where there's tight budgets, you want to make things more simple. I don't want to go out and make a five-course meal for someone when I'm struggling to put food on the table. And the simpler you make foods, one, the better you'll feel. Yeah. Like, if you guys saw how I eat, you would laugh at me. I am so basic. I could eat a pound of ground beef for every meal and be totally fine if I had sauerkraut. But the more basic you eat, the simpler you eat, the less effort you have to put in your food, I personally think the better because we make food so complicated. And cooking at home, the one thing I love about it, too, is I can control the foods. I can control what goes into my food. Like, even when I go out to great restaurants, like, if you guys have ever heard of Good Kitchen, they are one of my favorite restaurants to eat out at. Yes. And there are still times where I still don't feel great after the foods I've eaten there. And I'm a creature of habit. If I eat a food once and, I, and it doesn't upset me and I feel great after it, I'm going to eat it every time at the restaurant. Like, when I go to Good Kitchen, you better, you, I mean, everyone knows my order. Two burger patties, two sides of avocado, two orders of bacon, and hot honey sauce. Now, I'm not joking. It's every single time I go there. I don't waver from it because I know I feel great on it. I had it today for dinner because we were on our way over here. And even then, I'm still someone, I'm like, I could make this at home. This was a convenience sake because I had to come here. But when you eat at home, one, I always say it's, it's a fun adventure for me and my wife because we always get to cook together. It's spending time because I'm, I'm at the office all day. She's at school all day. And I always say, if you're eating out, there's just not that same connection. So again, some of the things that we do, we do on a personal choice because it actually helps benefit our marriage. And I love cooking with my wife. 
I do the meat, she does everything else. Because <laughs> if you've seen me try to bake, it is horrifyingly bad. But controlling the foods you put in your body is, to me, essential. And when you go out to eat, you can't guarantee what they're going out to. That's why there's four restaurants we probably go out to eat in Atlanta right. at, at most. Yeah. And it's because, you like, I know I'm probably going to catch some slack on this, but just because Chick-fil-A says that they're a Christian food company That's does not right. mean that their food's good for you. Holy smokes. Just because, they're it, it, just because they're closed on Sunday doesn't mean that their food's good for Amen. you. I'm sorry. That's right. Like the amount of employees from their corporate office that we take care of, and they get three free meals a day, and I have to tell them, hey, you don't get to eat your free food anymore because it's making you sick. But at the end of the day, I, I always say I'm, I'm very blunt, and they can attest to it. We love it. I, I'm someone who it's, I'm not trying to be mean to you. I want the best for people, but I want you to get better. At the end of the day, if my mom were to despise me because I told her she couldn't have some of her sweets, have some of her fast food that she was eating before, if she despised me but she was healthy, I, wouldn't, I could care less. Right. As long as she's healthy. Because, yes, I want my mom to meet God one day. Not today. Right. Because that's something we can control. And at the end of the day, as long as she's healthy and she gets to meet me and, fa and her grandkids one day, that's all I care about. That's so good. That's so good. So good. Okay. I know we're going to ask questions. I have a friend who his, his wife, and I promised I'd ask this question. Mm -hmm. She has not been out of the house since 2015. She's full of anxiety. Okay. She can't handle people. What are some things that she could do at home right now to get her to take that step off the front porch and get in a car? Because it's been multiple years. That's a tough question. One, I'd love to have a conversation with her. Like if it's something where you could set that up, I'd love to just talk with her and just see where she's at. Um, and hear more because obviously I'd, I'd want to know more about where the anxiety came from or when did it start. Just get a little bit of the history. Because um, again, are there some great herbs out there that you can take like ashwagandha, California poppy, L-theanine, um, there's a lot of things out there that could benefit her and get her stress levels to come down. But at the end of the day, to me, that's just the same thing as a medical approach, is you're just covering up the symptoms that she's having. And those are some of the things that you can do is like some, some of those herbal supplements can be great for calming her stress response down and getting her body to kind of come out of that fight or flight state. But I would also need to get some testing on her too because, again, having – that severe of anxiety where you can't leave the house. And again, if it's something where it's a fear of people, if it's a, it's, it's a pre, um, if it's some kind of experience that she had that was negative to something in the public, that's where, again, I, there's even people that I could have reach out to her and speak with her and really kind of do, like, again, awesome. uh, consider doing, like, it's, it's I want to say therapy, but it's a little bit different. But just sitting down and discussing what's, what's going on because half the time people just need someone to listen to. Like when, when it comes to that amount of stress, that amount of anxiety, a lot of times those people don't feel heard. Because ladies, have you guys ever gone to the doctor where you just don't feel right, got PMS, got some hot flashes, something, your doctors run some lab work and they say your labs are fine, it's all in your head? What does that mean? Are they trying to give you anxiety? Are they trying to stress you out? That's all that's doing. It's not beneficial to anyone. Getting the right approach to someone's body is, is key to me. And with what we've been experiencing in the last couple of years with medical system, even the natural system, is everyone just wants to give people pills, supplements, all that. No one actually wants to find out what's going on in their body. And for that person, I mean, I 100%, and that's where it's so hard for me to say, take these supplements. If it's something where she needs something to get out the door, that could be a great option. But at the end of the day, I'd, I'd rather her get all of her testing done at home, not even have to leave the house until we can figure out what's going on. That's good. Thank you. Y'all enjoying this? Yeah. We have a mic right there. And if you have a question, start a line right there at that microphone. And if you could, 
keep it because of the many questions. We probably, okay, probably need to make it as quick as a question as Mike possible. One, Mike one, test. And he'll Mike make one, a quick Mike answer. One, test, Mike one, Mike one, test, test. There it is. Here it comes. Here it comes. There it is. You keep mentioning the word, uh, saying the word testing. Is there a testing hierarchy? And how do we know what, where to start to find out what's going on in our body? Okay. So question on testing is if there is a hierarchy. I always say it's very difficult for me to say hierarchy of testing. It's very specific on the individual person. Like two people coming in with hormone imbalances probably won't even get the same test in our office. Um, for us, it comes down to the discussion with one of our doctors. And again, our office runs everything from blood work, stool tests, Dutch tests, which is a hormone test. We run heavy metal tests, mold tests. You name a test and we offer it. Um, and it's so hard to say which test is beneficial for people until you sit down and have that actual conversation with them and figure out what they're dealing with and their history. Um, but obviously, I mean, again, there's, there's specific tests that will be more beneficial for different people for different reasons. Like hormone testing, you always want to do some form of blood testing. Um, there is a stool test for digestive issues. So, yes, you do get to collect your own bowel movements for three separate days with us. It's great. Um, my question was, is cramping during menstrual cycles for women, maybe, maybe like the severity or mildness of it, an indication of her diet or health? And is there something we can do to reduce it if it is severe? Mm -hmm. So cramping during menstruation is not normal. You guys, it's called PMS for a reason, premenstrual syndrome. When a doctor, any doctor tells you that cramping during your cycle is normal, it means they don't know what they're talking about. And I hate to be the chiropractor that has to say that. So when it comes to cramping, obviously that's going to be, a, uh, there's a couple things that can contribute to it. Um, one of the biggest ones I see, especially in women, is over-exercising. And basically that cramping is meaning that the, the tissue that's trying to shed the lining is not getting enough blood flow. Because obviously over-exercising, stress can really do that. Um, but there can be some nutrient deficiencies. There can be some dietary things that are affecting it too. Um, I always say one of the best things that can help with that is obviously magnesium during your cycle to again kind of relax and calm some of those tissues um, but then also looking at sugar intake you guys will hear me hound on sugar um, because I truly believe that sugar is one of the most harmful things to our bodies and you'll hear everyone say oh sugar in moderation sugar in moderation 99% of people don't know what moderation is they think a single cookie like I don't know what sugar in moderation is. If you put a thing of cookies in front of me, I'm eating the whole thing. I don't know how to eat one or two. That's just not how I am. So looking at the diet and looking at obviously sugar intake will be a huge thing, but obviously there, there's going to be some form of hormone imbalance where you could actually be draining some hormones from over-exercise, from mental stress. Mental stress will be the number one thing that will kill you, ladies. That's why I always say men have to be very cautious with their women because if they cause them too much mental stress, men can make their wives sick. Um, sorry. Um, for athletes or dancers, what are some key vitamins that help with bones and joints that you can find in your day-to-day -day foods? Organ meat. So it. it's, I always say when it comes to getting proper nutrients in the body, I'm, I'm a huge fan of organ meats. Um, obviously getting them in your diet any way possible. Like I'm someone who I cannot eat organ meats. I have tried over and over again. Um, but getting those organ meats in your diet, I do, personally I do uh, liver capsules, I do other types of organ meats in them as well too. Um, but then getting enough protein in your diet, especially women. So obviously guys never struggle with this because guys want all the gains. They want to be the biggest guy in the gym. Um, but usually women are probably the ones that I see the most efficient when it comes to protein intake for their, throughout their body. Um, and obviously keeping that lean muscle mass, mass can keep you healthy, but also making sure you're getting collagen. That is one thing that most people are extremely lacking, and that's why I'm such a big fan of organ meats as well too. Good evening. Um, so I do eat fairly healthy. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for several years. This is pre-COVID. Uh, and everything that you showed us tonight in, in regards to food and nutrition, I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, I also have recently joined the 50s Club. And with that said, my body is falling apart, quote-unquote. <laughs> um, and I say that to say that I'm just 
whole bunch of new things are happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am not menopausal, okay. and my hormones are still intact. Mm -hmm. I don't have that issue. So I've been told that I need to tweak my diet even further. I'm like, how? But I'm going to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, what is your opinion on what they call the OMAD one meal a day? So, so ladies with your – this is where, again, men and women are very different. I personally like to do one meal a day quite often. So I, I understand where that comes from. But when it comes to women, not eating can actually be really harmful to your hormones. Your hormones are a direct response to the foods you eat. Like me and Miles up here, we can go and do a three-day fast. We can do a seven-day fast, and we can recover very quickly. Okay. Well, three for Miles. I'll do another seven-day fast. And I can do seven days in the water and recover just perfect afterwards. Ladies, if you did, you'll probably notice your cycle for the next two months will probably be pretty thrown off. Because your hormones, again, your hormones fluctuate every week, every single day. They're always different. Me and Miles, our testosterone's always high throughout the day. We don't really fluctuate. We have a single day cycle. Our testosterone's the highest in the morning and is the lowest at the afternoon or at night when we go to bed. And again, it's not a huge difference between the, between the two. Ladies, your hormones are different every single day. And this is why, personally, I'm not a huge fan of women fasting. When it comes to if you want to do some form of fasting, Intermittent fasting, which again, I don't count as true fasting. I basically call it skipping breakfast because to me, fasting is 24 hours and above. But intermittent fasting where you're actually still getting the necessary nutrients into your body, that's where you have to be very specific with the foods you're eating. But then watching sugar intake as well too. Again, sugar intake for women can cause a lot of hormonal issues, especially when it gets going towards menopause. And I always say for women in menopause, one of the best things you can do is just start cutting sugars out. Because again, that, like when women talk about being in menopause and they start to notice that they, they're gaining weight and they can't seem to lose that weight no matter how much calories they cut, how much, how much they exercise. Um, really looking at the sugar intake. And sugar for us, you guys, isn't just added sugar. It's the carbohydrates you eat, the potatoes, the fries, um, even sweet potatoes. That's why when I say like me and my wife, we don't eat a whole lot of sugar. It even includes the carbs. Let me pause real quick and tell you a, a great college, and if you all want to write this down, because it's on sale right now on Amazon, and he has approved it, by the way. I've been on this for a while. It's, the brand is Natural Force mm -hmm. Collagen Peptides. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. But, um, well, you can at least recognize it when you pull it up. Natural Force is the brand Collagen Peptides. I don't know that we'll get all to the, all the questions. Yeah, just think I apologize. I'm trying to speed okay. up my answers because I'm kind of going long, long way. But go ahead. Hi. Um, how do you heal your gut after a three-month round of oral antibiotics? I've heard that you should take the post um, pro, postbiotics and not the pre-pro and the post. I've just heard different things, but what's what's the best recommendation? Yeah, so obviously after antibiotics, because again, antibiotics are not specific. They kill everything. Mm -hmm. um, it does take time for your gut to heal after. I think it says anywhere from 6 to 12 months post-antibiotics for your gut to actually fully recover. Um, that's why one of, the, one of my favorite things are two products I have every single day, and that's the aloe vera juice that I pulled up before. Love that for just decreasing the inflammation, increasing that mucosal lining. Um, but then sauerkraut too, because that has the pre-postbiotics as well in it. Um, that's where, again, testing is always my best friend with that, too, because, again, I can't say what your gut's dealing with, because, again, you could have, before you had the antibiotics, had SIBO, which is you had too much bacteria, and the antibiotics helped bring that level down, but it could be, too, that it wiped your microbiome out, where you actually might need to reintroduce those bacteria, and, again, with, with probiotics, I'm not a big fan of them. Again, I use them in very specific cases because I think they can do more harm than good for a majority of people. Um, but that's where testing can be huge for it. So I would say starting with the aloe vera juice, the sauerkraut, but then obviously getting, some, getting a stool test, which I know is a glamorous test. You have to collect your own bowel movements for three, three days in a row. It's awesome. It's the most exciting test we have. Um, but understanding what's going on in the GI is really huge. But yeah, the, the aloe vera juice and sauerkraut. Again, I'm, I'm a very basic person. I don't, I'm not going to recommend a huge supplement list to you for that. Hey, how you doing? Good. 
Um, so I had a question for building programs for women. I'm a personal trainer, mm -hmm. so I'm wondering what's like the proper exercise level for a week-to-week -week basis. Typically anywhere from one to three mm -hmm. sessions a week, one hour each. Uh, but what's appropriate given what you're Yeah, saying? so it, it really depends on her cycle. And this is where like we have an easier graph to hand out. If I, I'll grab your information after this so I can send it to you. Um, weeks two and four for women are going to be the best times to do intense exercises. And now, ladies, I'm not telling you throughout the month on weeks one and three you can't work out. It's just to the intensity. If you're pushing your body extremely hard every single day of the week, you're going to make yourself sick over time. Weeks one and three, you want to kind of taper back, doing more stretching and obviously keeping your intensity low so you're not raising your heart rate and depleting hormones. But then weeks two and four where you can really push your body. These are the best times for you to have weight loss and obviously the time when your hormones are already on the decline. So it's not going to cause as much detriment to your hormones and cause problems down the road. Um, I'll get you a, a graphic that has a lot of just, I mean, it's a basic graphic that just shows where you want to spend the intensity. Um, and again, the exercise I always say is up to the lady. If she likes CrossFit, do CrossFit. I always tell people the most overlooked exercise, though, is walking. Like every personal trainer that, or I shouldn't say every, but a majority of personal trainers will tell you 10,000 to 20,000 steps. You guys, I love walking. It's extremely beneficial after meals and everything. But yeah, weeks two and four where you want to go high intensity, really push their bodies. They can do heavy cardio. Um, but weeks one and three is where you kind of want to taper down and obviously focus more on possibly more mo mobility during those times or even just focusing on form on weeks one and three. So weeks two and four can be like the max out weeks. Um. It's, I guess this could be a general question and a little bit more personal, but in my family, um, pretty much every woman has had a hysterectomy before the age of 35 because of fibroids. So mm -hmm. can you maybe speak a little bit on how that could be tied into diet and like what things I can do now to be proactive about it? Yeah, so obviously, I mean, again, something that is uh, unfortunately common nowadays is hysterectomies. And the one question I always ask people, because again, I don't want to ask questions and then not be able to provide solutions, but how many more body parts do we have to rip out of people before you get healthy? Did God put body parts in our body by accident? No. So when it comes to things like fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, so they're kind of the two big ones that come to mind, there's obviously some, some testing that's needed, but the, the big thing with them is your body's not excreting your hormones properly. I mean, there's some great things that you can be doing. Increasing cruciferous vegetables is just one of the things that comes to mind. Um, but it's, it's a big assessment of, I always say, you have to look at the sugars. And I know I sound redundant, but you have to realize with, with my experience, there's very few people that are sick that don't have blood sugar issues to some extent. And you have to look at the types of foods that you're eating. Um, and obviously with that too, I mean, the cruciferous vegetables are one of the best things when it comes to helping your body metabolize and excrete hormones. You have to focus on liver health as well too. That's why we talk about eating organ meats. I'm a big fan of, I think it's called organotherapy, where if you have an organ that's, dis that's damaged, you eat that organ to help support it. Um, but Getting your body tested is a big thing and understanding your hormones too because if you start to notice them early, getting a jump on that before you get in your 20s, 30s and you start having long-term issues um, is kind of the best thing to start doing. Thank you and God bless you for sharing um, your wisdom with us today. Um, my question is, um, what are some brands that you can share with us that include all of these things that you're talking about? All these foods, yeah, and grocery stores, maybe. Yeah, so grocery stores. I mean, you can go from everything from. I mean, obviously, I, I'm I'm always biased. I like Whole Foods because you can kind of get almost everything in one place. Nature's Pick is another one too, because Nature's Pick is the only place that I can find duck eggs at, um, and because I can't have chicken eggs, I'm actually allergic to them. Um, Sprouts is another good option. Again, I've I've been able to find good organic foods at Target, at Walmart. Um, Obviously, the, is the selection a little bit less? Yeah, but of, of course you can still find those foods there. Um, one of my favorite places too is, and this is just me personally, I like supporting local. Um, so I always go to farmer's markets on Saturdays. Like the Marietta one is one of my favorites. They've got Eden Pure beef, and the one downfall is, is again, yes, their beef is very expensive. Um, when you meet the farmer, I can't remember his name right now, he's hilarious. I love him to death. 
Um, but then there's other good options there too. I know there's another there's another couple that they have a local uh, local farm as well too, where they do grass fed, grass finished beef. Um, and I always say, when if it comes to supplements, I'm always biased. We have our own our own brand of supplements. Um, but there's other great ones out there too. Like if people always ask me questions of, is this a good brand? If it's something that's as good as ours, I'll let them take, keep taking it. I'm not going to say that you have to take ours. Um, but like when it comes to like organ meat capsules, there's Ancient Nutrition, I believe is the company that has, no, sorry, that's, that's Bone Broth. Um, I'm trying to think of the names off the top of my head. Um, but when it comes to local stores, like yeah, Nature's Pick, Sprouts, Whole Foods, um, I can find good things at Target all the time, Walmart, same thing. Um, and then obviously farmer's markets are just my big thing. I like supporting local, local people mostly. What about the brands, like in those stores? Oh, brands, for foods? Yeah. Do you know what kind of beef we buy, babe? I don't even remember. I'd have to take pictures. Maverick. Like when it comes to like sauerkraut, like Bubby's you saw on the screen, was that one was my favorite. And Maverick. Maverick? Mm -hmm. Maverick beef is grass-fed, grass-finished, yeah. and there's pre-packs. Publix. Publix. Mm -hmm. So... When it comes to those specific, like the beefs and things like that, again, I'm, I'm a big local person, so I always buy, I can't remember the farmer's name now, it's, it's bugging me. It probably is Farmer Dan. Um, but it's, it's Eden Pure Beef. He actually has a local farm that's about two hours east of here. He's at the local Marietta Market every weekend, and like it's, it's amazing how good like organic, and like when you comment on any of his posts, he'll comment back and say, our cattle is never vaccinated, never been in a, on antibiotics, no growth hormone, nothing as natural as you can possibly be. And it's amazing how good it tastes when you just cook it with butter. Yes. It's delicious. Like you don't need seasonings at all. And I was shocked so when I first tasted it. Good evening. Um, so I've been on a journey for the past year now on restoring okay. my hormones. Okay. And I've pretty much cut out a lot of junk. I'm not really yeah. a fan of sugar. Soda candies, not too much, but Good. I'm still struggling with coffee and salt. How do those affect my hormone healing? Love coffee, but I would say there's caveats with, with foods I love. Um, coffee is one of the highest mold-containing foods out there. And, I'm a, and again, that's where coffee gets to be expensive too. Like I'm a big proponent for the Bulletproof brand coffee. Um, because they test their coffees for molds, metals, everything. And I like that because, um, again, I don't want to be putting things in my body that I know are going to harm it. So coffee I'm a huge fan of. Obviously, if you don't have an adrenal issue too, though. So there are some caveats with these things. Again, is there times that I've had to take patients off of coffee? Mm -hmm. Is it rare? Yes, because I know how miserable most people are without coffee. Um, salt is, again, I'm a huge fan of salt. Um, I personally take handfuls of it and eat it throughout the day. Yes. Like, and it's, but it has to be the good, like, right. Celtic sea salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, right. Redmond's right. real salt. Um, I love all those different brands of salt, and I eat it, I douse it on my food, I eat handfuls of it at a time. Yeah. Um, absolutely well, love salt. I want to jump in there with you because, just to kind of speak into the whole salt thing, I'm a salt lover. How many are salt lovers in here? Okay. Table iodized salt, the bleach salt, actually does cause high blood pressure, but the others do not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense because we've all just trained ourselves to think salt is salt, but it's not. Right. You have to take right salt. I'm actually loving yeah. throwing handfuls of salt on the steak with a stick of grass-fed butter. I'm like, how am I not going to get a heart attack? But it's the truth. I've had, I had to talk to him and say, listen, I, I'm eating everything that everybody's told me all my life not to eat because it could cause heart attacks. Because my family has heart attacks in, in, my, in my, my ancestry. But and, it's salt. Yeah, and you have to realize, too, like when it came to my mom's labs, like she was at a very high risk for a silent coronary artery disease. She was doing everything that every medical doctor would tell her to do. Eat less red meat. Eat more vegetables. Eat more fruit. Low salt. Low salt. She would have ended up with worse labs than what she had. So crazy. And when you start to look at the body differently, and you start to actually look at what are some of the other factors that are playing a role in it, and you really truly change your diet. I mean, she made those changes in four months. She's still not out of the woodwork. She still has a lot of work to do. But it just goes to show that once you give the body what it needs and you take out what it doesn't. And, like, I'm sorry, guys. I harp on sugar so much with people because we 
have, oh, it's, it's not even, it's like 100 times more sugar than we did 20 years ago. And we're getting sicker and sicker. Like, we have more autoimmune conditions, more infertility, more cancer, more digestive issues than we did 10 years ago. But we have more medical interventions. We have better medications, better surgeries. But we're still missing the lifestyle part of it. And that's where some of the things we, we say and we do sound crazy to people. But once you start to implement it, you cut out the things that are actually causing a lot of inflammation in your body, you'll start to be like, okay, holy smokes. Like, maybe this is achievable, attainable. Redmond salt is a great brand. You can get that on Amazon as well. And Celtic salt, Mimi loves that. But it, literally in the morning, if you put just a drop a little bit on your tongue and let it sit there a minute, then drink your water, mm -hmm. it's a life changer for I real. It, it really is with energy. On a Sunday, they, it's in my water bottles up here for energy, for stamina, all your minerals, everything's in there. I know we got to move, but that's a good brand. It's a good brand. I don't know where she went, but you got it, right? We're going to try, because we've got three, six, we've got eight more. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to just knock these out because I know time is short. Question. Rapid Q&A's, got it. Okay, so, um, hello. I think she had asked the question about gut, but what would you say is the best thing to heal your gut? Like gastritis and your esophagus. If I had to give one thing, oh, I'm a big person on testing. So I have to be a little bit biased. I'd want to get a stool test to see what's going on. If it were coming down to a product, I'd want to acidify the stomach, where most people think that's crazy because like, oh, gastritis, uh, uh, reflux, anything like that, they're thinking you have too much stomach acid. It's typically the opposite. Um, I'm a big person on acidifying the stomach because a lot of times gastritis is infections that your body can't deal with and they just linger. They're chronic issues where if you acidify the stomach, you decrease the risk of new pathogens coming in from the foods you're eating. Because again, how many people actually wash all the foods that they eat? I don't. Where that's where I do a lot of apple cider vinegar because I love the fact that it increases stomach acid production. It can help regulate your blood sugar levels. It can help fight off other infections as well too. So I love apple cider vinegar for that. If you notice that it causes too much burning sensation, too much like discomfort, it just means your body is a little too inflamed for it at the moment. So that's where aloe vera juice is the, op is the other one to kind of calm down some of that inflammation. So again, just a couple simple things like that. But then you can also have like chamomile tea is great too. I love chamomile tea and obviously I'm a little biased towards that too because we have a chamomile supplement that's great for the digestive system. Um, but again, without testing, I don't like to give out supplements like that. So apple cider vinegar for stomach acid, aloe vera juice if it's too painful, um, is, I would start off there. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'm going to be very honest. When I saw you can't have crab legs and shrimp. <laughs> and I just want to know why. <laughs> I'm getting attacked. No, so here comes the blunt. So they're, they're bottom feeders. And obviously with... If our oceans were clean, I'd have zero problem with them. He did tell me I could have shrimp every now and then, though. Yeah, and it's something every to, again, again at the end of the day, these are recommendations to avoid as often <laughs> as you it? can. Um, but when it comes to shrimp, crab, lobsters, they're bottom feeders. They're eating everything at the bottom of the ocean. And typically, our oceans right now aren't the healthiest. There's a lot of stuff that's being thrown into them. There's plastics, there's metals. Um, and obviously, when they, they do research on what the toxins that are building up in these, uh, these different types of animals are, and they just see that these things don't really get rid of toxins very well. They kind of hold on to them. So they're just seeing higher levels of heavy metals, mercury, those different types of things. That's why when you even look on that um, to avoid list, there's specific types of fish from different areas that we say to avoid because those parts of the ocean have higher heavy metal concentrations based on other areas too. Um, so it all comes down to, again, there's, there's environmental testing that they do on, on these animals to see what are the toxins that they're holding on to. And shrimp, crab are typically ones that are higher. And that's where I always say those are the ones that, again, give and take. If Pastor Delano wants to have it once every two weeks, every month, I'm fine with it. Again, it's minimizing your risk. I don't expect everyone that I talk to to be 100% perfect with their diet. You guys, I'm the one who preaches this. And have I cheated on my food allergies every once in a while? Yes. Have I had a sweet that I know I probably shouldn't have had every once in a while? Yes. But if you make the decisions and make the right choices 90% of the time, it will change your life. Amen. 
90% of the time, not 20% of the time. Not 89%, 90. Um, hi. Um, so when it comes to, am I talking too loud? No, go ahead. Okay. No, you're good. Okay, cool. Um, when it comes to taking birth control for like a regular and extended period, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like me, like I've been taking it for almost a quarter of my life. Mm -hmm. Is it healthy to just like quit it cold turkey or is it something that like I would have to slowly wean myself off? Put me in a tough spot. Oh, and um, I'm going to take a seat, but thank you in advance for your answer. Yeah, so I always say, as a chiropractor, I legally cannot tell people to get off of medications. I have a nurse practitioner who can. Um, no, I mean... What would you tell your wife? Well, my wife would never be on it. But, no, if, if it were my wife, obviously, you can come off of it, but it's not... There's no saying how your body's going to respond coming off of it. You... I've, I've seen people who were on birth control for six years and they got off birth control and they got their cycle back right away. And was there discomfort? Yes, because they had discomfort going into it. Um, but actually one of the docs who, she's now a wellness way doc, she was on birth control for six months, lost her cycle after the fact for two years. So some people respond differently. And that's where I always say it's very hard to say what's going to happen when you come off of either a medication or you start doing different types of dietary changes. You might respond really well and really quickly where you get off of it and you go back to a normal cycle, and then obviously it's just working on getting your hormones balanced. And it's really hard to say what needs to be balanced until you see testing. But then it's also really difficult to say of what symptoms you're going to experience too, because some people come off birth control and they're perfectly fine. Some people come off of it and it's just really downhill, because I know a lot of women go on birth control because of how horrible their cycles are. But then there's also the women who they don't know if their cycles are bad or not because the second they get one, their parents put them on birth control right away. Um, so obviously, coming off birth control can be, I always say, it's kind of a guessing game because you don't know exactly how your body's going to come off of it. Um, but obviously, there are great things that you can be doing. There's some liver support you can do. Obviously, testing to understand your body after you get off of it um, is really important, though. Hello. Um I had a question about protein bars necessarily, like the ones that are necessarily sweet. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of counteractive, like if it has high amounts of sugar in it? Because like, I feel like sometimes I just go for the sweeter one or like the birthday cake flavor, but I feel like it's not doing me justice. I feel you on that one. Yeah. No, I used, to, I used to crave, I loved protein bars because I'm like, oh, it's got 20, 40 grams of protein, and then it has 25 grams of added sugar. And, um, I understand why they're doing it, though, because obviously after a workout, actually one of the best things that you can get, you don't need protein right after a workout. Mm -hmm. You actually need sugar because the sugar goes back in the muscles to restore those glycogen levels, which is just the sugar stores in the muscles. Protein you can get within the next 24 hours. And obviously, that's a very controversial debate that's going on right now in the fitness industry. Um, I'm someone to, and again, this is just my personal bias, I'm not a huge fan of protein bars anymore. Um, just because I like whole foods, but there are good protein bars out there. Like Bulletproof makes a great one. It's lower in added sugars. Um, but I can't say that the ones that are higher in sugars are going to be necessarily extremely harmful. I'm not a big fan of them though. So like there are specific ones out there that are better, but if you're eating something that's high in sugar, it's kind of like eating a candy bar. Okay. To me, that's what a majority of protein bars are. They're just loaded with sugar, loaded with added products to make them taste phenomenal. I can right. never argue with someone. These protein bars taste really good. They have made them taste the exact same as candy bars. And I say they make them taste like candy bars because they are candy bars. Do they have protein in them? Sure. But they also have a ton of added sugars and a lot of added junk that your body doesn't need. Um, so obviously finding something that's going to be less with the added sugars or just I'm a huge fan of eating whole foods. Um, again, I'm a little biased with protein powders. I like ancient nutrition. Um, they do a bone broth protein powder with no added sugar. They actually use I think it's stevia and monk fruit, mm. and I really like their products because you still get that protein, but it's going to be less of the added fillers and the added junk, really. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Good evening. My question, well, I'm actually one of the persons that took the COVID shot, mm -hmm. and I took it twice. The first time I took it, it caused a big knock to mm -hmm rise up on my shoulders. And that's when it first came out and the knot is still there. Mm -hmm. The second time I took it because my mother was sick and I didn't want to bring nothing around her. But I just want to know 
how long does whatever it is that they injected in us stay in us? Because I know when I went to the doctor, they were saying they had, um, it made your, when, when I went for a mammogram, it made it seem like you have a lot of lumps, but it was, it was looking like cancer, but it wasn't cancer. So I just want to know how long does that COVID shot stay in your body? So that's a tough question, and this is where I always turn to, like, I was just at a conference the other week with Peter McCullough, who is the cardiologist that spoke out and has probably done the most amount of research with the COVID vaccine. I can't say because this is the first vaccine of its kind. Mm -hmm. With it being mRNA, mRNA like that, we don't know how long it's going to stay in the body. And they've, they've tried to do studies to see what can be the most beneficial to help with detoxing it out. And I always say it's, it's very hard for me to even recommend those because, again, they, they don't know the long-term outcomes of the studies. But what I always recommend to people, too, is getting, like, your immune system tested because, obviously, if you're still having issues, it means there's still something causing a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't necessarily comment on, like, how long it's going to be in your body for because it's, it's something that's so new. That's, it's a technology that really has not been, do like, we haven't really dove into too much. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really hard to say how long it's going to be in your body. Obviously, there's some great things you can do to support your body with detoxing and getting rid of some of the things that are, were in the vaccine. But, obviously, it's really hard to say how long it's going to be in there for. All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to be super quick, um, but my grandmother has been battling metastatic ovarian cancer since last January. Mm -hmm. She's had two major surgeries. They gave her a hormonal pill, um, hoping that it would like help shrink the cancer. They recently found out it didn't do anything to it, like nothing. Um, and that it's actually spread. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to offer her a new medicine that is like $15,000 a month for 30 pills and like all kinds of stuff. So I guess my question is, what would you recommend for someone like her? She's always been extremely healthy, so. <laughs> Seriously, if she's spending $15,000, oh my goodness. Like, yeah, no, I mean. I mean, a lot of, I don't mean that, but a lot of people spend money one way or the other, prevention or treating it. Mm -hmm. If she can get it to where she's coming and getting treated or prevention, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of, I'm not the doctor. Go ahead. No, no, that's perfectly fine. No, I 100% I agree. Um, it is something too where the second things get bad with the medical system, your insurance will drop you. And it's, it's a sad fact of life. It really is. Um, I just had one of our students who was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Her insurance dropped her the week before her treatment was supposed to start. She's going to probably spend over the next six months about $150,000 that she doesn't have. She's $250,000 in debt from school. Um, so what I would say is, again, the, the testing part. That's why, you, like you said before, they gave her a hormone therapy that they thought might work. Right. right. They're... they're basically throwing darts with their eyes closed, hoping that they hit something. And to me, that, that's such the wrong approach. Like when it's something as severe as cancer, I would run every test in our office on every person rather than just guess at what they're dealing with. Because again, do the treatments that they have work for some people? Yeah, 100%. I can't deny that. But does it fail a lot of people? Yeah. Otherwise, people wouldn't be having these issues reoccurring. Um, but what I'd recommend for her is obviously getting some hormone testing to actually see where her hormones are at, testing her immune system. That is one of the most overlooked things when it comes to, when it comes to cancers. Um, but then also getting a history too. Because I mean, I always say like I have to assess where the, the person is coming from because I even go back to look at where they grew up, what kind of lifestyle they grew up with. Because again, cancers take several years, decades to actually develop. And sometimes it can go back to, hey, they were drinking water out of a well that they found that there was heavy metals in that water, in that well water. And if you don't go back to that time frame, you miss that, and you don't t run some kind of heavy metals test, you're missing one of the major uh, triggers for her body. Um, so it would be come down to testing, but obviously the conversation, too, to see where her history really came from. Okay, and you have... 
does testing at your office, like she can go there and... Yeah, because where, where is she located? Cause we have 60 plus offices over the U.S. Oh, she's in Marietta. Oh, yeah. We have everything in the office. The only thing we don't have is a phlebotomist. Okay. If you guys know of a good phlebotomist, <laughs> we are hiring. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome. Hello, thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, I have one question. Well, the question is, uh, you mentioned four restaurants that you and your wife attend. I'm new to the area. I love this church too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so um, what are the four restaurants you mentioned that are healthy? Yeah, so big one, and this is the one that I'm, I mean, we eat at 90% of the time, is Good Kitchen in Marietta or the Good Kitchen in Smyrna. Um, Veronica and Peter are their owners. If, if you go, I will give you a kind of a prelude. If you go to her restaurant and she starts talking to you, be ready to talk for about two hours. You will hear why she started the restaurant. You guys, I love her to death. But yeah, be ready to talk to her for two hours. She's a, an amazing woman. She's actually going to be at one of our events coming up here soon. Um, Good Kitchen is number one okay. by far. Um, one of the juice places that we have too. Uh, I also know the owner of that. Her name's Amy. She's a wonderful woman. She's actually a neuro... Uh, neurosurgeon something like that I can't remember a tech to a neurosurgery um, it's called up dog so it's an acai bowl and juice replace so this is more for people who again don't like animal products I went there today for wow I, we've, we've eaten out a lot babe this week we gotta cut it down <laughs> went to up dog for lunch went to oh my goodness yeah it is final she's stressed out she's done she passed um, those are two of the more local restaurants we also like places like and this is um, more of one that it's kind of a chain but first watch they have and they have good options and again i'm i'm a million dollar bacon fan two orders a million dollar bacon whoo but they have like avocado toast with gluten-free bread um they have huh? and again there's probably places that i don't know about because i've only been here for about a year and like i said me and my wife are creatures of habit like do we like to experiment every once in a while and try new restaurants for sure. Like, 101 Steakhouse is one of my favorite steakhouses. We have gone there for every big event we have ever had. We have a specific server that we ask for every time we go there because he is amazing. Um, and that's where, like, fancier restaurants, again, you pay a prettier penny, but you know the food you're going to get is a better quality. So one thing I do love about Atlanta is there's all different types of food. Um, and I'm always, again, we're always trying to find those connections to different healthier restaurants, but... Oh, it was Good Kitchen, Up Dog, um, First Watch. True Kitchen and First Watch. Um, oh, yeah, there's an organic Thai place actually right by our event this weekend. It's called El Thai. It's organic Thai food. It is delicious. Yeah, gluten free, dairy free, vegan. It is delicious. Yeah, El Thai. El -thai. It's literally L Thai. I will say that I heard, I don't know if this is true yet, but that Sweet Green was about to change their oils. And not do in October. They're supposed Most likely. to be going to avocado oil mm -hmm. instead. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of healthier restaurants, especially because of the the app, it's Seed Oil Scout. And the one thing I don't like is that yes. they make you pay for it now. Oh, ridiculous. It, it used to be free. Seed oil Scout. So Seed Oil Scout basically looks for the restaurants that don't cook with your vegetable oils, canola, soybean, all of those. Um, they try to cook with either avocado oil or ghee, butter, things like that. And a lot of healthier restaurants are kind of being exposed because they use seed oils, and that's obviously been a huge controversy lately. So a lot of people are transferring over to those healthy restaurants. So I'm sure that they're probably switching their foods it's now. It's thirty four ninety nine a year for that. It's the seed oil scout. Mm -hmm. I just got it this week. Yeah, and also who is switching over to avocado oil is Krispy Kreme. So <laughs> I'm telling you. No, no, thank I'm you. Kidding. Pray for me. Pray for me. Again. Y'all are going to wreck you. me. Okay, thank you. Hey, good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> stop, stop, y'all. All right, so my question is, what are your opinions about seasonings, and do you have any recommendations regarding dropping your A1C besides exercising and your diet? So seasonings... Do I have, like, again, I'm personally, like, if it was me between me and my wife, I'm very simple. I had salt and black pepper to everything. Um, she's a little bit more fancy than I am. 
Um, like when we make taco meat, she has to have some kind of taco seasoning. Again, I can't remember what the specific brands are. Siete's, I know Siete is one of the big ones. Um, they have really good organic options. Um, trying to think of some other. Yeah, Organic Valley. Um, we use a lot of that, but again, I'm a, I'm a, again, I'm a creature of habit. Salt and pepper for everything. I'm very simple with it. Um, dropping your A1C, that is, it really is diet heavy. Um, if you want to make a true change in it too, you have to, have to, have to cut out sugars. And I mean everything from your carbohydrates to even your fruits for a short time. Because like with my mom's labs, like her sugar was her big issue. She still to this day, since those tests in October, has not gotten a piece of fruit. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to her labs, we're seeing the changes we want to see. And when it comes to A1C, obviously it takes time. Because again, that's a three-month average of blood sugar. But cutting out the sugar so your body can start to heal and repair. Basically, it's giving it a break. Um, but other things that you can do to help benefit A1C are things like apple cider vinegar. Again, really helps with blood sugar regulation, insulin sensitivity. Um, yeah, it, like A1C really is, comes down to the things you do every single day. Even though it is an average over three months, like you could really throw it off by having a bad week. Um, so avoiding those added sugars, avoiding the, the carbohydrates and Again, sticking if you do need some fruit in your diet, just because again, obviously I'd need to know more of the history, like other things that are causing some issues as well too. Um, you'd, you'd also want to take like low glycemic fruit if possible, if you still need the sugars, um, just depending. Again, I, I would need to see more labs for that one for sure, but really limiting the amount of carbohydrates that you're taking in as well as added sugars too. So really sticking to your meats and your veggies. Like that is basically her diet right now. Appreciate it. And I, I have a couple, of, even though you didn't ask me, um, slap your mama. That is an amazing, it has no additives. It's just straight, clean ingredients. It's like Tony Saturez without the bad stuff of Tony Saturez. And then Simple Organics Garlic Salt. Anything Simple Organics is really good. It's very clean. Ooh, there's another company called Soul to Body. They make black garlic salt and paste. It's heavenly. You soul put that on a soul to body. It's a local company in Marietta. They make. They actually sell it at a couple butcher shops, but they're just little tubs of garlic salt, and, or black garlic salt and black garlic paste. So it's basically fermented garlic. It is unbelievably good. We put it on every steak. 